nice smile, isn't it? Eh? That was our little man today. You're all ready for this, are you? Beginning 
Your grace has been made known through water and the Spirit. And so, on your behalf, I proclaim the faith of the Christian Church. We believe in God the Father, who made the world. We believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, who redeemed humankind. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. So, I'm going to ask Catherine and Nathan to bring their children forward, and along with them, their godparents. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If they might hand you back to that. certificate for each of the children and also we want to give you today a, a candle for each of the children that has actually come all the way from Bethlehem so it's a very special uh, candle for each of them so uh, Jude's going to present these now <coughs> decided not to light them because um, <laughs> obvious reasons. <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much. So, receive this light, for you belong to Christ, the light of the world. Christ is your light and your way. May you grow and live in the faith of Christ. Amen. So now I'm going to ask Catherine and Nathan to make a promise and would you please give me the answer, with God's help we will. Will you love your children, committing yourselves to care for them in body, mind and spirit? With God's help we will. And to the Godparents, the answer is the same to the promise I ask you to make. Would you please say, with God's help we will. Will you help these parents to nurture these children? With God's help, God's help we will. will. And now, the congregation, I ask you to make a promise, and the answer is the same. With God's help, we will. 
Members of the body of Christ, we rejoice that these children have been baptised. Will you so maintain the church's life of worship and service that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord? God help, we will. So let us pray. Generous God, touch us again with the fire of your Spirit and renew in us all the grace of our baptism, that we may profess the one true faith and live in love and unity with all who are baptised into Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know what you think, but I'm sure you think the same as me. Holly and Casey have done amazing, haven't they? Yes. I think they deserve a big round of applause, don't they? Take your seats uh, and then we'll sing uh, another hymn with your settled. We just baptised Harley and Casey uh, in the name of the Trinity, didn't we? We baptised in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, where are your friends later? By telling them, oh, the Trinity is okay today, don't you know? Um, so, we have a set reading uh, for Trinity Sunday. It's a short reading that comes from the end of Matthew's Gospel. And it's very big for today because it talks about baptism and it talks about the Trinity. And here is the reading. So our reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. And it's entitled... Jesus appears to his disciples. The eleven disciples went to the hill in Galilee, where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, even though some of them doubted. And Jesus drew near and said to them, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. Thanks, you got a whiskey yeah. in that. <laughs> Just water, by the way. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> uh, by the way, you're in great voice today, aren't you? I'm very impressed with that. You absolutely smashed that last hymn. So um, it was great. I can hear you uh, over my own voice. Thank goodness for that. That's <laughs> what I say. Uh, that reading that we uh, just shared together from Matthew, it comes at right at the very end of Matthew's Gospel. So at the very end of Matthew's Gospel is a promise from Jesus that says this, Lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. So I love the end of Matthew's Gospel if it's only for that promise. Lo, I am with you always even to the close of the age. But what I, what I especially love about it is that it actually comes full circle in Matthew's Gospel. Because Matthew's Gospel begins with an angel telling Mary and Joseph what the name of their baby is going to be that will be born at Christmas. And he says, you will call him Emmanuel. And again, tell you friends this later, if you don't already know, the name Emmanuel, when you translate it from the Hebrew, literally means God is with us. So Matthew begins his gospel by telling us through the name of this child Emmanuel that God is with us. And he ends with this promise of Jesus, who is Emmanuel, Lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Sometimes though, uh, we know this is true, don't we, because many of us have lived long enough to experience this. It's not always obvious 
when we go through certain times of our lives, that, that God is with us in the way uh, that he has promised. Sometimes we can go through very difficult and uh, dark times, and it's only natural sometimes that we ask ourselves a question, well, where is God in all of this? God's promised that he would always uh, be with me.